Because the SDOs have such different models, um, I think we heard uh, people alluding to this morning, yes, we believe that there are ways to change. Some SDOs already make their standards available for free online, like NFPA. For those who don't make their standards available online, um, have you discussed what possible proposals or solutions you think would be reasonable, whether that's online but read-only, I think we heard this morning on the second panel, or read-only printable or something of that sort. Ha have, you dis have you discussed and um, at least contemplated what might be a reasonable middle ground to implement Section 24, given what we've heard today and given your varied business models? Not to put Jeff on the spot, but he's standing up. Yeah. Uh, yes, well, I think it's fair to say most SDOs are really looking at this issue. Uh, I mentioned earlier we've taken one incremental step to provide access free at no cost to the standard during rulemakings. Uh, so that's we've already moved in, in this direction more than we've ever had in the past. Uh, so I would say, yes, we are looking at this issue. I can't give you a timeline, though, uh, for when you might see more SDOs move in the direction that NFPA has. It's, it's just a delicate balance, and there's a lot of unknowns how it impacts our models. So we're very interested in, in getting to the end of it, but we're, we're not there. Yeah, Joe Wendler from ASME. Uh, similar, you know, we've uh, made one of our standards available during the rulemaking process using the Real Read software. Um, I don't know what data we got from that, you know, saying you know, how many people downloaded it. Um, did that impact our sales down the road? I don't think we have that data. And so I think we're a little hesitant to just go full steam ahead because, you know, we, once you turn that switch, you're going to have to do it for multiple standards, multiple agencies. and. You know, it's kind of hard to go backwards once you make that step. So, you know, we're, we're actually interested in getting data to see how that would potentially impact our model. But, you know, we just can't make that step without that data. Let, let's, uh, let's ask the opposite question, um, which is we heard this morning that IBR, I think we heard both from ACUS and NIST, that IBR has been successful um, over the last several years um, following the NTTAA, and certainly we've been incorporating at FEMSA um, by reference since the 70s. But maybe we should discuss what do people see the impacts being if the government, if FEMSA in this particular instance, started writing its own unique um, standards? Because what I think we heard, and I don't want to mischaracterize me, we're in a fact-finding mode at FEMSA. I think I heard from the panels that that may not be the best solution come January if we haven't reached some form of compromise. But I, I wonder if anyone has any other thoughts about um, FEMSA writing its own government unique standards, the impact that that would have in general. Um, we know what it would do to the rulemaking timeline. I think it would be longer, certainly. But in, overall, um, we heard this morning that there's an interest in keeping up with technology, getting broad consensus when these standards are made, representative views, and, and pushing safety forward. So if we were to take that on, um, absent being able to reach a resolution as of January, what are thoughts on what that might mean um, to the SDOs and ultimately to some of the safety organizations that are here? And, and as a variation to that, what about FEMSA writing a more general standard saying one way of complying with the standard is, is one of the SDO standards mm -hmm. or an alternative means of compliance subject to approval by the administrator. I just got to tell you from one of my clients, since they've elected to sue the federal government for lack of pipeline safety in their state, which wasn't my necessary recommendation, I just tell them who's the truth and who's not telling the truth. But my perspective was is that was a vote of confidence in the FEMSA technical state capabilities. Given the lack of technical pipeline capabilities in that particular state. So from a technical perspective and through my many years of interaction with various groups in FEMSA, FEMSA has the te technical capabilities and I wouldn't sell them short. And the problem is, is there's a lot of resource demand on their time. And so if you're going to propose something or an alternate engineering approach, I think from a public perspective and my feedback 
from my clients is it have to be very definitive because if you leave it to the choice of the pipeline operator, you're kind of in the do loop that's kind of started this process. It's selectively interpreted, and that's an honest opinion from my perspective. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we've got a question that's